We're here at the Asus ROG booth at Computex 2016, and some of the things that caught my eye, uh, beyond just the GTX 1080, of course, is some of the cool peripherals that they have. Now, of course, we're going to take a look first at Project Avalon. Now, Project Avalon is Asus's take on modular, sort of cableless, or very nearly cableless computing. Uh, it is kind of a proprietary motherboard form factor and proprietary case form factor, but everything here is modular. The back I.O. is modular. The front, there are four hot swap two and a half bays, or modular two and a half bays, I should say. Uh, the graphics card side is fully accessible. Uh, it's a normal PCI Express slot on the side. It's got pretty good breathability. There were two configurations that we looked at here, one that had a custom closed loop water cooler and another one that had a, uh, you know, just a regular CPU cooler. Now, the custom closed loop water cooler was not actually a custom closed loop water cooler in uh, the strictest sense. Uh, basically, all they did was uh, put some right angle connections on for the radiator, but it's otherwise a, a completely standard radiator setup. Now, this is called Project Avalon, and Asus thinks that the uh, enthusiasts and this particular community will, will like the design aesthetic here and the modularity. And from an engineering perspective, it is easier to engineer these individual components like individual back I.O. and individual other internal components than it is to engineer a bunch of different motherboard SKUs. So what Asus may be saying is, hmm, you know, we've got a million motherboard SKUs. What if we could just let people mix and match the components on the motherboard and then they can sort of build out a machine from there. And so that's kind of an exciting prospect because if you do look at it I mean Asus does have a ton of different motherboard SKUs but maybe Asus could get more into the uh, you know custom PC market and certainly some of their small form factor machines have been very successful like the x51 and some of the other smaller desktop computers that even support SLI uh, have been very, very successful. And we got to take a look at some of those here as well. Uh, machines like the X51, you know, running the 1080. Here we have, you know, a laptop running a 1080. Now, Asus has demoed this kind of an external graphics card dock before, but with a proprietary connector. But it's now also available in Thunderbolt 3 through USB Type-C connection. And that was the really exciting thing at the component show here. You know, they've got, they've got their laptop that has the uh, external water cooler and they've got the laptop that had the proprietary connector for an external PCI Express dock, but now Thunderbolt 3. Yes, that's right. Thunderbolt 3 for your external graphics card dock. And we can see the 1080 peeking out from in here. The 1080 from Asus. Oh, I hope I get a closer look at this thing, but the NVIDIA 1080 uh, you know, they've, they've sort of gone from their red and black color scheme to just so, something that's all black. Now, there's a couple accents here as far as accent lighting goes, but, you know, RGB control. You've also got some fan controls on this graphics card, meaning that you can plug an external 4-pin fan into the graphics card and control it that way. Two 6-pin cables for power, of course. Two HDMI, two DisplayPort, and one DVI on this particular 1080. This is a really exciting take on the GTX 1080 graphics card, and it's even more exciting to see it in an external Thunderbolt enclosure. All right, well, we're here at the uh, Asus Consumer Electronics side. We took a look at the PC components, but it's time to take a look at the Consumer Electronics components. Now, if you uh, saw Asus's press release or you saw any of the other stuff, they had a bunch of announcements. This is the Asus Transformer 3 Pro. There's a lot of features here that I'm sure if you've seen the Surface Pro 4 from Microsoft or the Surface Book, you're thinking, wow, I wish that had these features. It's got connectivity over here, USB Type-C Thunderbolt. And that was, uh, you know, what we were seeing was Doom on the Transformer 3 Pro. So how does that work? It's not, not the built-in GPU. That's right, this is a Thunderbolt connection to this. Now this is the same setup that we saw um, in the components section. It's just that it's hooked up the Asus Transformer 3 Pro. And uh, you know, as you can see, the fans just kicked on. The GPU is waking up and we're getting ready to, uh, getting ready to play Doom on the Asus Transformer 3 Pro. Now in addition to Thunderbolt, you've also got HDMI, USB 3.0, and other connectivity. Uh, it's got a really solid keyboard. The keyboard is very similar uh, uh, to the, uh, the Surface Pro 4 from Microsoft. The keys seem to have a similar travel, and it has the uh, sort of dual angle option on the cover. But yeah, 60 FPS. Now this is it, you know, not, not everything is maxed out, but this is, oh, a GTX 1080. There's a GTX 1080 that's running Doom on this, on a tablet, or a two-in-one, I should say. Who says you can't game on a tablet? <laughs> Well, I found a new thing that moved to the top of my evil lair wish list, and that's this 32-inch 5K Ultra HD monitor. This is 99.5% Adobe RGB and 84% the uh, REC 2020 standard. Yes, 5K, 5120 by 2880. This does require DisplayPort 1.3. 
for full functionality. So this is super bleeding edge. This is the Asus ProArt 5K 32 inch UHD professional monitor. So if you're looking for the absolute top end in professional graphics right now, this is it. All right, one of the other announcements that Asus had was the Zenfone 3 Deluxe. Now there's actually three different models, uh, a larger phone, the Deluxe phone, and sort of the mainstream phone. These are available with the uh, Qualcomm 14 millimeters, Snapdragon 820 series, CPU 2.3 gigahertz, and the Adreno 530 GPU. Right now it's Android M with Zen UI 3.0. Uh, these are full metal body phones. They have an internal antenna, though, so the metal shouldn't interfere with the antenna. These, they have up to 6 gigabytes of RAM and 256 gigabytes of ROM. It's a 5.7-inch Full HD Super AMO LED and the uh, Asus True Life technology, which is basically just color calibration and some other, other features they've added to the hardware. It's got uh, uh, five magnet speakers. Uh, smart AMP, high resolution, a rear 23 megapixel camera, that's a f2.0, and a front 8 megapixel camera, also f2.0. Uh, this is a 3000 milliamp hour battery with quick charge 3.0. And uh, this connector is a USB 3.0 Type-C. If you want to take a look at the uh, autofocus, one of the things that Asus has put a lot of work into, into this is the uh, autofocus. It's got an autofocus time of about 0.03 seconds according to the specifications. And they've got a little train on the track here set up as a demonstration. So we've got this train set up here so that the phone has to autofocus on the train basically. But the autofocus is pretty much immediate. See the continuous autofocus, how it's how it's pulling in and out? That's really fast. That's the fastest autofocus I've ever seen on a phone. And this is the more mainstream Zenfone 3. Now the Zenfone 3 is the uh, 14 nanometer Snapdragon 625 CPU, 2 gigahertz, uh, up to 4 gigabytes of RAM depending on your configuration. This is a 5.5 inch screen. Uh, that's 500 display nits. It's an IPS plus display. A 16 megapixel rear camera, um, f2.0, and the front camera is 8 megapixel. Also a 3000 milliamp hour life battery. The back feels almost like ceramic. Seems like it'll be a fingerprint magnet, though. All right, one of the other big announcements from the ASUS press release was the ZenBook 3. This is a new laptop from ASUS. It's thinner and lighter than the new MacBook, but uh, 16 gigabytes of RAM up to Intel Core i7. Uh, it's got a 12.5-inch Full HD 1920 by 1080 display, up to 1 terabytes of M.2 integrated 802.11ac with Bluetooth 4.1 support. It's got one USB 3.1 Type-C, supports display output, power display, and data transfer. It's got a 40-watt-hour lithium polymer battery that's up to 9 hours of battery life. The ZenBook 3 is also available in a bunch of different color options. We saw blue and gold. This is, of course, the uh, Asus Silver. This one does not have the uh, integrated fingerprint sensor. As you can see from the profile, it's pretty thin. So this... This is just a display model, we can't turn it on, but it is a full HD 1920 by 1080 display. It has a fingerprint sensor, a touchpad, and a mechanical keys. Now the, the travel on these keys is really not very much owing to the fact that this thing is, is incredibly thin. It's also disturbingly lightweight. It really, it feels, it feels like it's empty, but I'm gonna assume that it's not. Not really, I'm just kidding. 11.9 millimeters feather weight. 910 grams is uh, the weight when it's fully loaded and a 9-10 hour battery life is what we're seeing from the uh, press release and other information. The trackpad has a uh, nice metallic feel and it does have a mechanical click. And this, uh, this particular laptop won the uh, best choice award from Computex. Now the other thing that I wanted to show you is the Asus Zenbo. In, in addition to all of the other stuff, the laptops, the phones, consumer electronics, ROG, the virtual reality, I mean, the virtual reality set up at the ASUS area was just, it was mind-blowing. But there's also Zenbo, yes, ASUS is in the robots business, the consumer electronics, consumer robots thing, the ASUS Zenbo. Uh, they demoed this as sort of a personal assistant um, that could help with, you know, the elderly and staying in touch and, you know, just doing things around the house. But they demoed some really interesting capabilities, voice control. Uh, the thing seemed to have an infrared transmitter in it for controlling infrared appliances because at one point they asked the robot to turn the TV off and the robot drove over to the television and faced the television and I assume it, it emitted some kind of infrared signal that actually turned the television off. Uh, don't actually have a lot of b-roll of this because it was pretty much impossible to shoot because there were they had a stage set up for this and the crowds around this thing were just unreal because everybody sort of wanted this first look at consumer robotics now i'm not sure how successful this first iteration of consumer robotics is going to be but i've really got to applaud asus for you know approaching this kind of thing nobody's really cracked the consumer robotics nut except for maybe roomba with the uh you know the robotic vacuum but this project has a lot of potential. I, it might be fun to play with the development kit. 
and sort of see where the software takes us. But they demoed a lot of really interesting capabilities and they demoed a lot of really interesting capabilities on, you know, child interaction. You know, they put forth a couple of ideas as far as staying in touch with the elderly, using it for video, phone calls, and, and that sort of thing. So this is a really interesting product and, and is worth a look, I think. Well, that's pretty much it for the Asus setup. Now, actually, Asus won 16 Innovation Awards this year, ranging from everything from their Chromebooks to their ZenBook laptop to a bunch of their other products. And sadly, we didn't have enough time to cover everything, but you, you really, if you have any questions or there's something else that you want to see, you know, ask some questions on the forum and let us know because <laughs> we saw everything. Copy text was crazy. But these are the really eye-catching products that uh, I had a chance to film. I'm Wendell, I'm signing out, and I'll see you later.